So you've seen composition reactions and you've seen decomposition reactions. <clears throat> we don't do a lot with either of those two uh, decomposition reactions, mostly because they tend to involve a large amount of energy required to decompose things. Like magnesium carbonate is not easy to decompose. You have to heat it very, very heavily. And when they do decompose, as you can see, they tend to produce some sort of fume. Like potassium chloride produces chlorine gas, which is toxic. Potassium reacts with water, so it's, t it's flammable in the air. So those can be problems when we decompose. Composition reactions are kind of on the boring side. You know, you take coal and you heat it or you burn it and you get carbon dioxide, which is invisible. So you don't really see much going on. So we're going to focus our attention in two in the last three of these reactions. Uh, the first one is going to be single replacement reaction. Notice that in a single replacement reaction, you have a single substance plus a compound to yield a single substance and another compound. So basically, what's going to happen here is A is going to come along, it is going to bump B out, and B is going to come off by itself, as you can see, B. So when you do this, you will see that it is element plus a compound yields an element and another compound. But obviously, the left and the right are different. <clears throat> so your definition, a single substance replaces part of a compound. So something in the compound has to come off. This is really important because the number one mistake that people make when they first start writing single replacement reactions is they see single, they see two things, and they go, oh, two things must be composition. And bam, they just merge them all together. That is real, so they make some sort of compound that's like A, B, X. Really wrong. Don't do anything like that. Okay, always remember that this is going to bump something out. So something has to come off by itself. So let's see an example. Zinc plus copper nitrate yields zinc nitrate plus copper. Okay. So what's my single substance? Zinc. What did it bump out? Copper. And how do I know that? Because I look at my product side and I say, oh look, the zinc is with the copper. Is I'm sorry, the zinc is with the nitrate and the copper is out by itself. Now, there's actually an easier way to figure this out. <clears throat> we need to go back to our last unit. And remember the important ion stenosis sheet. On the important ion stenosis sheet, what was the charge on the zinc? It's okay. If you need to go pull out your important ion stenosis sheet, that's okay. Go, go get it. Pause the video, and we'll come back. Okay, so the zinc is plus 2. Now, is it a plus 2 right now? No. It's a single substance. And when it's by itself, it's not going to have a charge unless it's indicated. So there's no charge in the zinc, but if it were to form a, an ion, it's going to form a plus 2 charge. Well, it's going to form a positive charge. So I'm going to look at my copper nitrate and figure out, okay, is the copper the positive ion or is the nitrate the positive ion? Well, again, if I go to my, uh, my important ions to know, I see that nitrate is minus 1. Copper in this case is plus 2, and I can figure that out because the 2 came from over there. Therefore, positive ions will replace positive ions. Hence the reason the zinc and the copper switched places. Notice the zinc and the copper are not together because you can't have two positives together uh, and the negative off by itself. Let's see a slightly different example. Iodine plus sodium bromide yields sodium iodide plus bromide, bromine. Okay. Now, you can tell if you look from left to right that the iodine replaced the bromine because the bromine is out here by itself. Why did it replace the bromine? Well, as we know, iodine takes on a negative charge. Sodium has a plus one, bromine has a minus one. So the iodine is going to, because it's going to take on normally a negative one charge, it will replace whatever takes the negative one in the compound, which is bromine. Bromine comes out, iodine goes in. This is actually called halide transfer, specifically this example. It's called a halide transfer because it's two halogens replacing each other. So experiment number two, example of reaction number two, is going to be a single replacement reaction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to my test tube here in the front some copper nitrate, which is a pretty blue color. To that copper nitrate, I am going to add some magnesium. To that copper nitrate, I'm going to add some magnesium turnings. Now, magnesium turnings are just solid magnesium pieces, but they're just tiny little shreds. They're, it's kind of been chipped off of a bigger block. Okay, so you'll see. I'm going to add a lot. 
not a super exciting experiment, um, but there is a chemical reaction that's going on. You notice the color has changed drastically. It's, it's gotten a lot darker. I'm going to give it a little bit of a shake to make it react. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see, I'm not sure if you can see, that there are bubbles being formed. And the reaction is going. And you'll see that the color is changing. It's getting darker and darker green. It's kind of a, this is becoming a little bit more violent. Um, on the bottom of the test tube, you'll notice that the magnesium pieces have gotten a lot darker. And the reason they're getting a lot darker is because there, are cop there is copper being created in this experiment and that copper is clinging to the magnesium pieces. So what's happening here is you're taking solid magnesium plus aqueous cop copper nitrate and you're turning it into solid copper and uh, magnesium nitrate aqueous.